Hello, I'm Anthony. Um, I've got a project which I've uh, been uh, wanting to show. This project is all about automatic operation of fans and lights in the bathrooms. At the moment, I've got uh, the fans and lights operated by the same sensor switch, uh, which operates every time I walk into the bathroom. There's no need to uh, operate any uh, uh, switches manually. That's what I've had uh, for the last uh, seven years. But there's a problem. The fans operate when I don't want them to operate. Um, and they operate for an insufficient length of time when I do want them to operate. So in order to overcome that, I want to use a Raspberry Pi and some programming uh, to uh, control a bit more precisely uh, when the uh, fans are going to be operating. The other problem I've had is that when I'm in a shower, sometimes the lights go out. The programming and the logic is going to uh, be done in Python. It's going to read inputs from temperature sensors and also uh, a digital input from the, uh, the motion sensors. And we're going to use that to control uh, fans and lights. Um, and whilst we're using a Raspberry Pi, um, we're also going to do a few extra functions um, which you can't do with a normal switch. For me it's about using uh, a Raspberry Pi in a home automation environment and using that as an op opportunity to uh, learn some programming in Python and also some uh, basic interfacing techniques. Hope you enjoy the video. Two little relay boards. So we've got eight relay channels in total. At the bottom, you've got the Raspberry Pi Zero. And at the top, we have got a one wire host adapter. So from this one wire host adapter, we have got an RJ45 cable. This is the actual cable I'm going to install. And then we have got uh, a little hub here. This is just a daisy chain link. And off that daisy chain link, we've got one of the temperature sensors. And then at the end of the daisy chain link, that's the end of the chain. And we've got another temperature sensor running off as a stub. I've got a little uh, test program for the Python. And that just simply proves to me that all the relays are running without any trouble. This is uh, what I've got working. I've got the uh, Python program all set up. So what you're seeing here is a readout every second of temperature. Uh, you're seeing a readout of what the bathroom switch is what the light is for the ensuite and the main bathroom and also what the temperature rise is going to be. If the uh, extractor, if the temperature rise is more than five degrees, uh, the extractor fan will switch on. So what I'm going to do is I will simulate what it's going to be like when hot water flows in a pipe by uh, grabbing the temperature sensor and then what you can see is that the temperature starts rising. So we've got two degrees, three degrees. And if we have a look here, we should see the fan and the bathroom light come on. Like so. When the temperature rise drops below five degrees, and that's temperature rise within one minute, uh, then a countdown will initiate. But as you can see now, the, uh, the fan countdown has initiated. Um, that's set to 20 minutes and the light countdown has been set to 10 minutes. So that's what I've got here. Right, I've got my uh, equipment set up. I've got uh, the, uh, the program running. What I've got here is a, a plywood uh, board and uh, this will be the main lighting circuit coming in and then going out. 
Then we're going to have a free fuse spur. This is going to have a free amp per fuse in it. Um, it goes to a socket outlet. Uh, that's the power supply for the Raspberry Pi. We also have um, on the fused spur, we've got the main power, which is going to the relay board. Now, as you can see, the screw terminals underneath are obscured. Um, so you have to uh, mount this board after you've uh, after you've uh, terminated the uh, the uh, the wiring. Here we've got um, an optocoupler. We've got the main fan, and we've got a little light to simulate the bathroom. I've got here a sensor. So all I'll do is. Um, Click that on, and that's now got our light. And as you can see, the light is now on. So, we'll warm up the temperature. And the temperature is now rising. Four degrees, five degrees. There you go. The next challenge, is to get everything in this box. I want to get the wiring nice and neat. Um, and uh, then I'll do a further test on the bench, so to speak. And then, uh, then it's uh, good for mounting up into the loft. Okay, bye bye. Welcome to my loft. I've now wired up this cable to hot water pipes underneath the floor. So it follows this uh, soil pipe down uh, between the loft and the underfloor. Um, so I've now rigged up the Raspberry Pi uh, with a temporary uh, uh, extension lead. We're going to go downstairs and see whether uh, we have got valid temperature readings. Right, let's go and uh, see what the uh, temperatures do. Well, you can see the temperature is gradually rising up. There you go. So, one minute after I switch it on, the extractor fan comes on. We've got the relay boards uh, stacked up. Obviously, you can see all of the electrical work is done. The optic coupler is wired up. On the right side, we've got all the 240 volt uh, distribution. The left side is um, extra low voltage, 5 volts. So we've got uh, GPIO to the optic coupler. We've got the ribbon cable to the relay boards. Um, down here, we've also got the RJ45 connector for the temperature sensors, which are gonna come through this hole here. I've got an HDMI lead plugged in. I've got a USB lead plugged in. I've got the power supply plugged in. This will enable somebody to come along and uh, program them the Raspberry Pi um, if they don't have uh, access through uh, Wi-Fi. Um, and I've also got the memory card there, which is accessible. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I've got uh, all of the cables uh, wired on the outside. I'm going to put junction boxes for all of these. And that basically means that uh, wiring up in the loft is going to be a lot easier. This took me about uh, three hours to uh, wire up uh, this evening. So now my uh, unit is uh, installed up in the loft. Um, it's fully wired in. All the junction boxes are labelled uh, with the consumer or uh, input uh, that uh, mains power is going to. There's a few things which aren't wired in. 
we haven't wired in the cabinet lights. Um, or at least we have wired them in, but they're wired to permanent live. They're not wired to the relays yet. Um, there's still some work to do there. So we've got, uh, this is the ensuite fan. Over there we've got the uh, main bathroom fan. Um, underneath here we've also got the sensor switches. Just there. And we've got uh, the light there. And it seems to be sensing my motion. Right, so we'll go downstairs and have a look. Uh, this is all wired in, so all I need to do is close the box and then we're good to go. Okay, so now my uh, project is uh, fully wired up and it's live. So we're just, I'm just gonna demonstrate what it looks like to uh, walk into here. And here you have, the light comes on. There's no fan coming on. That's just what I want. If I wanted to have a shower, very quickly the fan will come on. There we go. Right, nice hot water. So that's what I wanted it to do. I wanted the fan to come on only when I'm having a shower. That fan will run for 20 minutes. Additionally, the main light will stay on for an additional 10 minutes. Uh, when it's just the sensor switching, it's three minutes to uh, have the light on. And that's just designed for short bathroom visits. The next thing I want to do is look at uh, nighttime lighting in here. Now, what I've got is a cabinet mirror light. So my thought is, is that during bedtime, I can light up this cabinet instead of the main light. And the idea is, is to uh, stop your eyes getting uh, uh, burned out uh, in the, uh, during bedtime. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces of logic I want to put in, but overall, um, it's looking pretty good. So I consider phase one of this project to be complete now. Right, I've now uh, done some modifications to uh, the uh, wiring and also to the logic. So uh, at, during bedtime, the uh, cabinet lights will uh, switch on instead of the main light. So what I want to do is just uh, demonstrate that uh, here. The intention is to basically reduce the amount of uh, bright lights at night time. We'll come on uh, after 11 o'clock. It will uh, stay like that in that mode until uh, six o'clock. Like that, just like that. So it's, uh, Still pretty bright lights, but it's not as bright as the uh, the normal uh, the, the the normal main light. I had a motion PIR sensor just there. One of the things I noticed was uh, in storms I was getting uh, lots of uh, false triggers. Um, it was just activating the lights all the time. So what I did was uh, I moved the uh, motion sensor. So it's just, just over there now. Um, and that means that I don't get any cold draft caused by the extractor fan outlet duct. And uh, that makes everything a lot more reliable in terms of operation. Well, that's the end of my project. It's been uh, an interesting and fun 
project for myself. Um, in terms of what I want it to do, it does everything I want. Um, everything else from now on is a pretty low priority. I had a few um, uh, problems with the fans coming on in the middle of the night and uh, I set up uh, some logging to see what the temperatures were doing on the sensors and sometimes they uh, throw back a, a crazy five digit value. Um, so I, I just modified the software to uh, address that problem. It's been very stable overall. Um, I've never suffered any uh, crashes with the software. Next challenge for me is addressing what the software is going to do when it's not connected to the internet anymore. At the moment, the software will, the, the Raspberry Pi will get its uh, time from the internet. So it's always got the correct time, which is important for operating the, uh, the bedtime lights um, accurately. If there's no internet connection, which will happen when uh, I sell this property, whenever that is, it, it, will, it will suffer a time drift every time the power goes out. So I need to have uh, a way of maintaining accurate time because I can't rely on the, uh, the new property owners going up into the loft and connecting the Raspberry Pi to their Wi-Fi router. Um, so that's a big challenge. Um, I've got two thoughts on the matter. One is to have a real-time clock, uh, which you can buy and you can connect to the GPIO header. The other is to have a GPS module. And that's something which is a bit more expensive. Um, but if I incorporate that, it means I can read the timestamp off the, uh, the, the GPS signal and I can use that to uh, maintain accurate time for the Raspberry Pi. Um, so all of the uh, little small details now is all about improving the reliability and robustness of uh, what I've installed in my house. I um, hope you've enjoyed uh, watching it um, and thanks for watching.